This Ash Wednesday begins our season of Lent. And it is a season that you see reflected in the liturgy goes to a deeper simplicity and a solemnness. And that's because in the first place what we're doing is we're praying and we're fasting for those in this own parish of ours who are preparing to enter into the church fully through the sacraments on Easter. But secondly, it's a preparation for death. It's a twofold death that we are preparing for in this Lenten season. And it is the death of Jesus Christ and our own death. You know, I found it providential that two, two different individuals that I know had deaths happen very close to them of people I knew. Um, one was a man whose wife, just after a mere 10 years of marriage and three children, his wife died of cancer. And at the same time, another couple uh, from the area who were going to have their first child just lost him in the pregnancy. And one of the most difficult things about both those experiences was I knew there was nothing I could say or do to change their circumstance. The only thing I could offer was a presence. And that's very difficult to just offer a presence. And in a sense, that's what we're doing for Jesus Christ as he himself goes towards his passion, as he enters into the desert. We offer him our presence to suffer with him and to share with him his pain by offering up sacrifices of our own. That's the goal of this Lent. And by doing that, we also prepare ourselves for our own death. To ask ourselves honestly, am I ready to stand before Jesus Christ if he were to call me back today? And if not, what do I need to change in my life in this time to repent Convert my heart and stand before the Lord, as St. Paul said, in the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Don't wait. So how do you have a successful Lent? What does it mean? And I have people ask me that all the time. It's like, what should I give up? What should I sacrifice? What are the things that I should do to actually live out this Lent? And I was reminded of a story that I wanted to tell to me that really enunciates what Lent is supposed to be for all of us. Um, there was this man, his name is Gonzalo, and he lived in the 16th century. And he was from a very rich family. He was the son of a merchant. And part of his job was to travel around Spain collecting all the merchandise from his father and the money for that and bring that home. And one time when he was on a trip, he uh, stopped in one of the Catholic churches on a Sunday and he saw there, in his eyes, one of the most beautiful women that he'd ever seen. And he got an interior illumination in that moment that this is the woman that you're supposed to marry. Um, she didn't agree, but that didn't matter. No, no. He, he spoke to her afterwards, and she was actually an orphan. You know, she didn't have any family, didn't have any money. She worked very low, low jobs to just make it through day to day. Um, but they came to conversing. He spent some time there. And when he left, he said, when I come back, I will bring a ring for you. And she said yes. And he left and he went back to his father to tell him that he had found his wife. But when his father found out how poor she was in such a low class, he felt it was an insult to the family. So he told him, if you go forward with this marriage, he tried to stop him and the, the son wouldn't listen. He said, if you go forward with this, you lose everything. You have no inheritance with us. You have no home and you have no job to provide. But Gonzalo was truly convinced this was the person that God wanted him to marry. So he left there with nothing but a donkey. And he went and he married this young woman, Catalina. And they lived very, seven years of very beautiful matrimony, very poor but content to be so. And they birthed two children together, two sons. But the problem is, is they, they didn't have any means. And so he was working any side job he could. And one winter, because the work was so rigorous and he was malnutritioned, he caught a cold and there was no remedy for it at that time. And he passed away. 
his mother Catalina used to tell their two sons over and over again the story of their father, of the sacrifice that he made so that they could be a family, so their children could be born. And the youngest of those two brothers grew up with an understanding that love means to totally empty yourself and give yourself for another. And growing up in the Catholic faith, he had a very deep intuition on what the nature of our faith is in the God who totally empties himself in Jesus Christ to save us. And he grew up to be one of the greatest mystics the Catholic Church has ever seen, St. John of the Cross. That's where he came from. And anyone who's ever read St. John of the Cross knows that it's a very depressing read. Most of what he says is you must deny yourself. You must deny all your appetites. You must be willing to separate yourself from anything that is sinful than anything that you are being tempted to love more than Jesus Christ and love more than your salvation. And it's all these negations and negations. And so many people are very daunted when they look at that reading. How could I live that kind of life? And the same kind of people, they look at our Catholic faith in the same way. That our Catholic faith is just a no to the world. A no to all these pleasures that could make us happy. And that's why they look at Jesus Christ on the cross. And all they see is suffering. And they say, I don't want that. I don't want that pain. What they don't see is what St. John saw. What they don't see was what Gonzalo saw when he left everything to marry Catalina. They don't see the love that inspires the sacrifice. And that's the mystery of our faith as Catholics. We don't give up things because the world is bad. We give them up if they're ever a hindrance to our relationship with Jesus Christ and the salvation of our souls and the souls of the world. What the fire is that enkindles our faith and motivates us to sacrifice is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And if we go through this whole Lenten season eating better, exercising more, becoming more disciplined, doing all these external things to better help, better discipline myself. If we are not by the end closer to Jesus Christ and more in love with Jesus Christ and living our life for Jesus Christ, it was a waste. It meant nothing. The only reason we do what we do is to grow closer to Jesus Christ. To come to know his relationship and his love so that it might inspire us to offer that same sacrifice in return. So really think about what you want to give up this Lent. And if it's not going to aid you in your relationship with God, that is not going to actually change your life, how you live, how you receive his love and love him back, forget it. When we die, Jesus will never ask us what we sacrifice for Lent. He will ask us, do you know me? Did you love me? Were you willing to fight against sin and a culture and anything in your life that separated you from me? That's all that matters. With all his austerities and all his disciplines, all his fasts, all his times of prayer, St. John of the Cross said, in the, in the evening of our life, we will be judged on one thing, how we loved. That's it. And the sacrifices we make are only for that one end. How can I fall more in love with Jesus Christ and the teachings of the Catholic Church. I want to give you three suggestions, just concrete suggestions, to really enter into a relationship with Christ beyond just external disciplines, 
Number one, if you're living in a state of sin, if you're just coming to Ash Wednesday right now because it's a thing that a lot of people do at this time or the one time of the year that you come to Mass, repent. Go to confession. If there's any mortal sin in your life, come to confession and bring your life back to Jesus Christ because one Mass will not save your soul. And if you're not living in a state of grace with Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what we do in life. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Our Lord tells us. Make a good confession. Truly think about my life and how I have lived and turn back to the Lord in His mercy and confession. Number two, Come to Mass every Sunday. Don't let anything get in the way of that. The communists used to say, if we can separate Catholics from going to Mass on Sundays, we will have them for the other six days of the week. Why do you think sports are so important on Sundays? There is nothing that should ever take the place of God's holy day on Sunday. And if you're going to Mass on Sunday, go an extra day during the week for that sake of intimacy with Him. And thirdly, and one of the most important from it, join a Bible study with us. And we have cards in all the pews right now. We have Bible studies going on in most hours of the week throughout the days so that you can always find one that's available for you. But in a Bible study, you're not just giving up a food. You're not just taking some time away. What you're doing is you're, you're really giving Jesus Christ an opportunity to reveal himself to you. And only to the degree that we understand and know who Jesus Christ is will we be able to offer him our hearts in love. Mass, confession, and Bible study. If you can do those three things, I promise you, This Lent will transform your relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time of repentance. Let us repent and believe in the gospel. For we are dust, and to dust we shall return.